In this problem, we have to find the Laplace transform of this definite integral. So the trick to do this is to recognize that this is the convolution of two functions. Recall that the convolution of f with g is defined to be the definite integral from 0 to t of f of tau times g of t minus tau d tau. So the first step in this problem is to identify this integral with f and g to figure out what they are. Once we do that, we can use a very powerful theorem called the convolution theorem that basically says if you have the Laplace of the convolution of f and g, this is equal to the Laplace transform of f, and then just times, just regular multiplication, which is awesome, Laplace transform of g. So this is called the convolution theorem. So when you have problems like this, the goal is to identify what your f and g are in the convolution and then apply this formula. By the way, the convolution uh, is commutative. You can easily switch the f and the g. So sometimes books will have f of t minus tau and then you know g of tau. It's fine. If your book is different, it's the same. Okay, so I don't see anything here with the t minus tau. So I am thinking that it might be a good idea. Let me switch colors here to set f of t equal to e to the negative t cosine t. You might say, well, what about g? Well, we can always make g 1, right? So g of t will be equal to 1, right? And then now you see it should match. Um, this part here is your f of tau. And then your g of t minus tau, well, that's right here. It's this, it's this invisible 1, which is no longer invisible. So that's your g of t minus tau. Whoops t minus tau, and this is your f of tau. So it does match. It's f of tau, g of t minus tau, f of tau, g of t minus tau. So now we can use the convolution theorem, which says this is the Laplace of f, which is e to the negative t cosine t, times the Laplace of g, which is just going to be 1. So for this first Laplace transform here, we're going to use something called the first translation theorem. So the first translation theorem says if you're finding the Laplace transform of e to the at times f of t, what you can do is you can drop the exponential function and replace it with a shift. So this becomes the Laplace of f of t. And then you perform a shift. You take s to s minus a. So here a is negative 1. So we'll drop the exponential function. We simply have the Laplace of cosine t. And then we'll take our shift. And then it'll be s to s minus a. But a is negative 1, so it'll just be s plus 1 times the Laplace of 1, which is simply 1 over s. So the formula for the Laplace of cosine t is s over s squared plus so if it was kt, it would be k squared. But because it's 1t, it's just 1 squared. And then we go from s to s plus 1. And then we still have times 1 over s. The last thing to do, maybe, or almost the last thing, is replace all of the s's here with s plus 1's. So this is s plus 1 over, and this would be s plus 1 squared plus 1 and then times, and this is 1 over s. That's a pretty good answer. You can write it as a single fraction. Let's do that. Distributing across the top, we'll just get s plus 1. And then on the bottom, I'm going to write it like this, s parentheses, parentheses, s plus 1 squared, plus 1 parentheses. Just take this s and put it out here and add some extra parentheses. And that would be the Laplace transform of this crazy definite integral, which is a convolution. Um, and if it wasn't, this would be a pain to do. Like, you know, to do this integral, like if you actually wanted to work it out, you have to use parts twice. I mean, there's other ways of doing it, but the easiest way to do this integral would be to use integration by parts two times. Uh, and it's a lot of work. So this is actually much, much faster. Oh, then you would still have to find the Laplace transform. So, yeah, way more work. Um, that way. I hope this video has been helpful to someone out there in the world who is working on this type of stuff. That's it.